One night I was lying in bed thinking, why doesn't somebody do a play about fat as a feminist issue which has changed my life? And I thought, I could write that play. Because of um, Bear Tyler and the work they did at the time, very sort of feminist theatre, um, they wanted to do a play about sexism. I think its, it's value has been, even across the 40 years, mm of doing a fair amount of um, pioneering and risk-taking, hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So from, from the moment of kind of like doing anti-homophobic work in yeah. schools, yeah. you know, to having a, a gay youth theatre, yeah. to doing uh, feminist theatre, yeah. you know, its origins, yeah. to now doing non-verbal theatre for people yeah. living with dementia. I think that's... If it has a legacy, if it has an impact in the industry, it is really about kind of taking some of those risks. And what would you hope it keeps doing then? The same. Stay risky. Stay risky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well for me, ideas around, mm. you know, socialism and feminism, and mm. I was listening, I was meeting feminists, and mm. it was all so exciting. And it was, of course, you know, important that we didn't, you know, we were, thinking of alternatives to, you know, bourgeois theatre and the elite who'd go to the national and that actually there were possibilities yeah. of reaching different kinds of audiences with different messages. Involving. Invo and involving them. Yeah. Be yeah. Being participatory was hugely important. Um, I think I was exploring it as a political label and that was really important to me and it was always that question about disabled artist, artist who's disabled, disabled woman, woman first, artist first, disabled first, which one comes first? In Angina Monologues I hit something uh, in myself was the, uh, the transsexual part of myself. So in that I was uh, a woman hiding in a sort of male self. I mean, I learnt my feminism with spare tyre. I didn't find interaction a very feminist experience. I don't know if you did. I, I think mean, I just met one or two women who were talking in a very exciting way, yes, and I just yes. started but to But there really were men who were behaving in. in a really atrocious yes. way. Oh, I don't feel that femininity has to do with necessarily a look. Um, it has to do with uh, an expression. So when we were researching uh, fat as a feminist issue, like bearing the weight, we, um, our aim was to destroy Weight Watchers. That was the plan. But, um, so I went along to Weight Watchers. And um, so they told me I had to lose a certain Undercover. Yeah, <laughs> sort of undercover. Strangely, they took me, but anyway. Um, but no, we would, you know, we would leaflet them and all this kind of stuff. You know, most women feel very crazy about their shape. But we had, you know, we, had, we did play to Weight Watchers meetings, we did, and oh, always yeah. we had people. Well, I didn't really know anything about spare tie when I originally came along. I had heard um, of, it, it was a, a, a word in the background, in the feminist uh, 1970s, uh, particularly fat is a feminist issue and so um, it, is a, it is a very interesting um, exploration for me now uh, to find out um, a little bit more about what feminism actually is because uh, I'm not really very sure um, <laughs> know, how, to, <laughs> how to be a feminist. In the late 70s, there were lots of lots of um, community arts groups popping up. So I was busy working with a little known company called Tara Arts, mm -hmm. an Asian theatre company. And uh, across the river, there was another company called Spare Tire, a feminist theatre company. And I vowed not to have anything to do <laughs> with Spare Tire <laughs> at the age of 17. And what, why didn't you want anything to do with them? 
What was it about those so people? So interestingly enough, it's, it's around the question of what is feminism? Hmm. And, and spare tyres philosophies at that time were just not aligning with my views about what feminism is. And I guess that's cultural, where it was coming from. Hmm. Um, and so it just was not connecting with me at all. So I do regularly laugh at myself that here I am now, how many years later, hmm. running the organisation. We had discussions followed by um, uh, people, we, we said to people, if you'd like to sign up to join a compulsive eating group, um, please do. Because alongside um, this, actually, I joined the Women's Therapy Centre which Susie Orbach started, took over from her running and setting up compulsive eating groups. So there was a kind of link between Spare Tire and the Women's Therapy Centre. And so, yeah, out of, out of the performances, actually, that, you know, came some of these groups, which was a really, you know, it, if anybody was kind of criticising us for kind of, oh, well, you know, nothing comes, comes of any of this. Actually, there was a lot that came out of this. Groups that sometimes lasted, as you said, four years. We, I went to a singing thing the other night, and this, and this woman said to me, spare tire. And I went, yes. I said, um, well, we, we did this first show, and we ran compulsive eating groups, and this woman said, I was in one. And it lasted four years, and um, she said, I still have friends from that group. A, a professional theatre company, three women, Claire, Chapman, Harriet Powell and uh, Katina Noble who were, who were just great and full of life and very funny and full of beans. We just kind of thought, yeah, we like these guys, we want to work with them. So we, um, we always kind of bring stories, our own sort of personal, sto personal you know, things that may have happened to us or in you know, things that happen to people we know as well. I'd always wanted to do drag, but then I'd always wanted to do drag. It was something that I'd wanted to do since I was... Uh, well, for a long time, actually, my creative side was calling me. Yeah, and, it, and, and in a way, so that's where how that, that surfaced with, with the character of Avina as well. Yes. Um, it, it's not so much that, you know, the rest of the piece might have had a lot of um, sex and sexuality in it. And is that something that you'd like to carry on doing? Mm. Is exploring that side of I, you? I, I think so. I'll have to see how I feel about it. I remember one scene I did with, um, with my friend Michael, it was these two young boys at school, but really, really close. So it was assumed by all the other uh, everyone else in school they were gay. So it's just about these two boys trying to sort of define themselves and sort of thinking, well, we're not gay, but we're, 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 we're close. Why can't, we, why can't we do that? I think the younger artists that are coming up are a little different in how they approach it. That's what I've been observing. They are a bit more, this is my right, just get on with it. They think in an equal way, which is great. There's one song in particular where all the females of the group got together and sang this really powerful song about, um, you know, about, empower about these women trying to empower themselves. It came off the back of one of the characters and the boy I played. I played that guy in, 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 and he was teased because, oh, you got beaten by a girl in a race. And afterwards, uh, she comes up to shake, shake my hand, the character I was playing, and I hit her because I just couldn't, you know, the character I played just couldn't handle being beaten by a girl. Mm. That inspires her and the other to um, go up and sing this really powerful song about, you know, about, women, about young women empowering themselves. That's it, yeah. We've taken all the blame, we've taken all the flack. It's time to show our anger, it's time to fight back. We can, we will and we must. I mean, it was a real showstopper. And it got rousing applause, standing ovation every time when we did it. But during rehearsals, I remember, it really divided the company. And the division was you know, fairly obvious. It was, it was the boys versus the girls. Because uh, we saw, we, we, in rehearsals, we sat down, we hear, heard that song. And it was so powerful and so vivid, we felt we were being attacked as boys. What, what, what we're trying to say in terms of sexism and male identity, why are you picking on us? And they said, we're not picking on you, but you know, that's how we feel. And, um, and it got so bad in rehearsals, um, the spare tyre had to mm. um, stop rehearsals for the day. Wow and everybody had to get around in a little circle and everybody really just had to be honest and really just um, say exactly what they were feeling. Because mm -hmm. you know, they said, look, we can't go any further until this is resolved. Yeah. And, um, that's very powerful, know, yeah. that's very powerful theatre, yeah. Yeah. actually. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I've never forgotten it, that's why I've never forgotten that play, that experience. And yeah. it's, it's certainly, and it's, 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 it's stayed with me over the, la over, you know, over the years. It really, yeah. it really, really has. But I don't stop being an artist. Hmm. And an artist is about being curious mm. and asking, but what if? Yeah, yeah. Or how did that happen? Or yeah. if we went and looked into that area, what, what would happen? 
And so that's it's it's about what what you as artists get excited about, yeah. really. And I guess that's how it happens. That's that's the discovery that happens, and you know, being alert and being open to that. I love chaos. Yeah. I why? Do. I why? Do. Because because I think it is it is the essence of creativity. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Big Bang theory. <laughs> okay. You've got to get a bit messy before something grows out. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna be eight stone by my birthday in hot pants by July. I'll start my fast tomorrow, but today I'll bake a pie. I'm gonna be eight stone by my birthday in hot pants by July. I'll start my fast tomorrow, but today I'll make a pie. Or something. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I'm sure we didn't do those parts. I love your different voice. I love that. It's brand new. It's brand new.